Celeste, and I'm a trauma-informed yoga co recovery coach and a yoga therapist. I've worked with many people who come into sessions with so little awareness of their own bodies and the basic concepts of returning to wholeness that if I hadn't been one of those people, I might believe they were disinterested or lazy. The truth is that most trauma survivors would be more present if they knew how. We do have a sense that something's wrong, um, but we think that it's a personal failing, and nothing could be further from the truth. What it is, is our mind and body self-defense protocols coming online to protect us from things that could have been very damaging to us in the past. But now, are reflected in our present, as though the trauma from our history is still happening. If you are a trauma survivor, you know what I mean when I say that we're triggered by events in the present that remind us of the past. But you might not know that one of the areas in which we're affected most is the awareness of our own bodies. If you have CPTSD, you already know the devastating effects triggering can have on your mind and on your life. When we are triggered, the effects can range from anxiety and hyperarousal to an almost catatonic state. Our minds may also try to shield us from reliving the past trauma by a process I call numbing out or being unconscious of body sensations that are really trying to tell us something. Many times, the trauma in our histories involve particular areas of the body, whether the trauma is actually physical or not. For example, if we were abused or witnessed the abuse of others, but were unable to speak up or stop it, we might find that today we lose our voice when we're stressed. That would be me. <laughs> if there was never enough food or enough love or connection to nourish us, we may have stomach problems. If our trust was broken by those who were supposed to love and care for us, we may have pain in our chest. If you were smothered by parents or siblings who didn't allow you to find your own agency when you grew up, you may know a sense of suffocation or not being able to breathe. We might also find that we have difficulty identifying some bodily sensations and might have challenges connecting cues to move certain parts of the body. We might even have trouble moving the whole body or in particular ways. There may be a sensation of being numb or an awareness that there's a disconnection between your body and your mind. An inability to be present with sensations in your body or to move your body in certain ways. In this case, it's not because of pain or physical infirmity, but because of the connection between the mind and the body's ability to translate. It's been interrupted and we literally feel numb. For instance, imagine you're asked to turn your left foot out to the side so that your toes are pointing to the left. Now this sounds simple, right? But sometimes it's not. If you're in a yoga class with a bunch of people that you don't know and a teacher that you've never worked with before and you're a trauma survivor, what can happen is called dissociation. When we're dissociated, our minds go somewhere else temporarily and we may experience the sense of not being able to interpret what someone else is asking us to do. Even though we know that the instruction is simple, we just can't seem to parse it into something that our body can understand at that moment. It's likely that we've been shut down emotionally and that we may feel inadequate, stupid, or even clumsy. Why does this happen? Often it's anxiety caused by fear of not being good enough or not measuring up in some way. The good news is this can be shifted. We can regain the communication between our mind and our body. It takes a bit of mindful attention and consistent work though. The connection isn't permanently disabled. The point is that this very disconnect is trying to tell us something. Often it's something that our mind doesn't want us to know for fear of possible consequences, like remembering that traumatic event in our past or having awareness of continuing trauma in our lives right now. If you're feeling numb or disconnected, the most important step is acknowledging this to yourself. It opens up the pathway to exploration so that you can reconnect with your body and discover what messages it's been trying to tell you. Go slow. Give yourself a lot of grace. 
It can be helpful to find a coach or a therapist who understands what you're dealing with and can guide you through with exercises and practices to reconnect your body and your mind. I find that awareness of my own breath has helped to reconnect and reinform my body and mind, giving the neural pathway a roadmap to follow. Be gentle with yourself. You don't need to be tough or stoic. You don't need to stay in places where you don't feel safe. Give yourself the time and the space to heal. If you liked this video, please like it below and check out my website, childhoodtraumacoaching.com. And thanks for watching.